My name is Maggie McAlpine, and I'm the Cyber Engagement Lead here at the Center for Threat Informed Defense at MITRE Ingenuity. And with me today is Steve Benton from Anomaly. Steve? Hi. Uh, yes, Steve Benton. I'm Vice President of Anomaly Threat Research. Um, I'll tell you a bit about myself and my team. Uh, we specialize in analyzing and curating the vast swathes of threat intelligence, which is, you know, there's lots of publicly free available open source intelligence, but there's also a whole host of commercial sources we partner with. Well, what we do is we work to improve the quality of this by reducing false positives. We enhance its relevance by creating topic-based mixes and blends, and we increase its utility by adding tagging and associations to significantly improve the precision, velocity, and impact of its utilization. So put simply, we're trying to turn actionable intelligence into actioned intelligence for our customers. Now, prior to my role at Anomaly, I was Chief Security Officer and formerly Deputy CISO at BT, and so I come with a breadth and depth of experience from the front lines uh, of cyber defense. Thank you very much for telling us a little about yourself and your organization, Steve. So um, perhaps we can dive right in with uh, talking a bit more about Anomaly's partnership with the Center for Threat Informed Defense and the projects we're working on together. Sure, well, I think the one we're gonna to highlight today is the one on attack flow. Um, and the reason we were interested in that was really working at a sort of IOC indicator of compromise level. Well, to my mind and from my experience, it creates a blinker view um, of the attack and hence you know, what you can do to respond to it. And with that increasingly becoming suboptimal for the organization, um, that's really just a sort of a whack-a-mole kind of approach. So you've got to change your approach up and a better way to defend is based on understanding the full, true, what I always just call the anatomy of the attack, the components, the techniques, the assets involved, what happens when and why, and what is the logical sequence of, of events. Um, and going beyond attack flow, we'll support the visualization of potentially complex components like a malware process tree to show these behaviors that analysts can identify and protect against. So, you know, my experience was analysts work best when they were able to visualize the true context of an attack and, and turn it around almost in their hands and look at it from, from, from different aspects. And it creates a means to express and explore this, this naturally, leading analysts to be able to work, you know, more collaboratively with one another but also make better tactical and strategic decisions in defending their organizations. Fantastic. Well, thank you for that. So uh, besides, you know, helping the analysts specifically, is there any like wider industry challenge that this project addresses in your mind? Well, I, I honestly think it is that, that wider scope of understanding the wider nature of, of an attack and how it links to other aspects that the actor might be involved with and being able to not just know that picture as it's happening right now, but how that picture evolves over time. We all know that attacks change over time. And that's why IOCs you know, are ephemeral because they, they're really good for a certain period of time. But attackers will come back and use the sort of broader techniques um, and tactics again and again, and being able to recognize when that is happening and when that broader picture is coming into play will optimize your response uh, as an organization. And that is the challenge that organizations face is they don't know how to make the best decisions um, at the right time and then execute those with velocity and impact. So I really think it's helping us to sharpen up our game and get back onto a level playing field, if you like, with those that would do us harm. Absolutely, thank you so much for that. So perhaps we can go into a bit more depth then about how uh, this project, TechFlow in particular, solves this problem, um, You know, cuts through the noise and helps practitioners and its target audience in general. Sure. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go over so something that's used often. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. um, and really, the attack flow projects recognize the huge value of an enriched visual expression of, of an attack that shows its progression, its logic, its success and failure factors in a navigable and interrogatable format. Uh, those last two pieces are really, really important. It's not a static picture. It's a picture that you can actually interact with. So it brings threat intelligence analysts together with their SOC analyst colleagues, allowing broad and, and specific action to be taken um, around protection approaches to improve threat hunting to new detection engineering. So for me, it's operating on two levels, um, instantly helping the viewer to gain that sort of full picture, that scope and extent of an attack 
then through the navigation and interrogation, the ability to turn the puzzle over in their hands to determine the defensive tactics and strategies that, that they might deploy. So for me, attack flow brings both analysts and experts together to increase their knowledge of the anatomy of attacks and how components relate and ultimately make better decisions to protect their organization. And by maintaining those pictures and understanding of attacks, they're gaining a stronger understanding of the attackers themselves and how might they evolve? Because we're not, you know, fighting a battle against you know, Cyberdyne Corporation. It's not a battle against machines. It is humans pitted against humans on the good side, the defensive side, and those that are on the uh, adverse side and on the criminality side. But once again, it's humans versus humans. Absolutely love that description, Steve. Thank you. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about how Anomaly specifically is leveraging and applying this work? Sure. Well, across the Anomaly platform, the visualization of an attack flow is linked back to our intelligence-enriched environment. So if I kind of take it through some sort of stages, in the analyze phase, the MITRE TTPs, the actors that typically utilize these TTPs, who and where these actors target, and their associated IOCs. So that's really getting you sort of down to the sort of the, the individual aspects and components of the attack. So that's analyze. Then you have hunt. So that's the ability to look for evidence of compromise in your infrastructure and hence see both the actual and potential for attack progression, which allows decisions to be made with precision. And then lastly, contain. Uh, and through our integrations to our customer's ecosystem, they're able to execute these decisions with velocity and impact. So, you know, taking this down to a bottom line, ultimately you're minimizing harm to your organization, frustrating or potentially even negating the actors and their ability to achieve their malicious objectives. Well, thank you for that, Steve. Uh, so the center obviously has a unique approach to collaborative R&D. Um, what did the uh, collaboration look like on this project from Anomaly's end? Well, we're committed to improve and optimize the effectiveness of intelligence and the growth of knowledge and understanding about threats, actors, and methods is absolutely key. But for us, you know, actionable intelligence is only a step to our true goal for the industry, profession, and customers we serve. Our goal is that we get to actioned intelligence, i.e. Um, decisions that are made with precision and executed with velocity and impact. And working with MITRE Ingenuity and the sponsoring organizations puts us at the core of a community that are united in enabling change, innovation, and impact for security. And that helps us build out our expertise and platform capabilities. Thank you, Steve. Um, and how has your participation in the center expanded your goals and helped your organization's uh, expertise and capabilities? Well, I think it's, it's being part of that community uh, that's come together, all sharing that kind of mission and purpose, um, you know, to, to make it. Um, more straightforward uh, and more impactful uh, for, for the defenders uh, to be successful against their adversaries. And as we come together in our sponsorship role, we're sharing our best practices, our learnings and our expertise and possibly our sort of insights into what a better future could look like. And so we're encouraging one another actually to take the strides forward with our own services, our own platforms and our own capabilities in order to provide that richness uh, for those that are actually involved in the defense of their org organizations to be able to utilize that understanding, utilize that security ecosystem that we're all part of, of providing. So I think, you know, organizations like MITRE allow us to collaborate in a way that maybe would be difficult and challenging if MITRE wasn't there. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Um, absolutely wonderful uh, answer and, and words, very kind of you. Uh, I suppose we have uh, time for maybe one more question. Uh, one key aspect of the center's approach is that as projects are completed, they're made freely available to the world. Um, could you talk a little bit about why in supporting that kind of investment in community resources is valuable for both you and the larger community? Yeah, well, I think the number one thing I would say is as an industry um, allied to those that work at the front lines. And remember what I said at the start, you know, I came from the front lines. I've been in the trenches. Um, we are united in a common mission and purpose. Uh, to frustrate, uh, to negate, and as far as possible, eliminate uh, the, the criminality and the malicious activities that we all face um, with our organizations. Um, and so the ability for us to be able to be part of that and be part of you know, an organization that helps to sponsor that freely is really important. 
to turn over our innovation and make it freely available uh, to anyone, I think is a further enriching process because there's always feedback that comes back. There's always commentary that comes back. There's always engagement that comes back. Um, and it helps to unite us as an industry and a community of, of defenders. And again, I don't think we would have that feedback loop without the ability to make these sorts of innovations uh, freely available. And what I have found with my team, you know, back in BT, is they were a team of innovators. They'll take good stuff that they're given and then they'll take it to another level. Um, and so the ability to provide, you know, those innovations freely and listen to what people are doing with it and how they are maybe taking it to a level we hadn't even thought about helps us to be better on the next cycle of investment. Well, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your answer and for joining us today, Steve. Um, obviously, we greatly enjoy our work together with Anomaly here at the Centre. Uh, and I want to thank you for making the time to join us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. Thank you.